exponential function. Okay, um, what's pi? 22 over 7. What's pi? What's pi, ladies? Okay, pay attention so you can get this lesson. <laughs> Okay, so there's a use for that number, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's very useful. Where did it come from? How did they figure it out? Yes, there was a circle. And history really is how do you get the circumference? You take the diameter, lay it across the outside of it, and it goes around just about three times with a little bit left over. And they used to use uh, three diameters to tell what the circumference of a circle was. And then they figured out that you know, it wasn't very accurate. So that's where we get the number pi. It's very useful in understanding area and volume um, of figures and circumference. So just like that, there is a special number uh, that we use for uh, logarithms and, and, and calculus stuff, uh, and we call that E. So everybody hit second, division symbol, enter. What? And you learned something today, didn't you? Yeah. I just said right on here and mine real quick. Oh my gosh. Yes. I two point seven one eight two eight blah blah blah. It's a special number, just like pi, so it's useful. It has some uses for it. Um, so it's just interesting that somehow they figured out what these numbers were. They are special. Okay, they're just like any other number, and they're very useful. Wow. Glasses break. You all right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, everybody. <laughs> yeah, we all messed up. All right, I want you to use your calculators and show me what these values are. So I need to know that you can uh, plug values in, substitute values into an equation and get values out. So the first one I want you to put it into is negative 3. So I'm going to show you on the screen here the first one to make sure we can all do it correctly. And then I'll give you some other things to do. Uh, okay, so we have uh, 2 times E raised to D, and this is a group of things, negative 0.5 times negative 3. That's what you should put in. That's how you should uh, do it. values out.
Why is it <clears throat> why is it when x is zero we get two? Five times zero is zero. What's e to the zero power? One. What's one times two? Okay. So you, there are values you can plug in to make sure you get uh, something out of. Okay. All right. Those are all the other ones. Let's keep going. Make sure you get the same thing. Raise it to when x is one, we get one point two one. And when x is 2, we get 0 0.73, 0 0.74. When x is 3, we get 0.45. What's happening? Yeah, it's decreasing. The function is decreasing as x increases. Excellent. Good. All right, now on your graphing part of your calculator, everybody graph these one at a time, please. f of x equals e to the x. So you should graph on your calculator, then also write it into your uh, uh, notes as well f of x equals e to the x. This is the standard form for natural, that's a natural number, that's what we call that. The natural number is the standard form of the graph, e to the x. All right, so you're going to compare all of these things to this standard form. So it increases. Yeah. Now, let's do these other ones. Tell me what happens with this. E to the negative x compared to negative e to the x and then also negative e to the negative x. I want to know what's happening to the standard form when you put those in. Everybody do it. Why? Okay. Do negative e to the x? What do you think is going to happen? <coughs> yeah, the standard form reflected about the x axis. What was that, Peter? How do you describe it versus the standard form? Standard form flips about the x and y axis? Yeah, it flips about the x axis and the y axis. No, it's 
Okay. All right. So that has everything to do with what we did. What we did yesterday. There isn't anything different about it other than we're just saying that a. is now E. It's an actual number. Okay, so everything still applies. This reflects about the x-axis, that reflects about the, the y-axis, this shifts it to the left or right, this shifts it up or down. So let's see if we've learned our lesson. Probably not. Oh, come on, give yourself some credit. I have to do this. All right, everybody graph this example as well. Y equals e to the x minus 3 plus 4. Stop before you put it in your calculator. Tell me what's going to happen. It's just up 4 to the right 3. Why, what's the shape of it? Is it increasing or decreasing? Increasing. What? Increasing. Why? What is E? Greater than 1. It's greater than 1. So if A is greater than 1, it increases, doesn't it? Okay. So I know it's going to increase. Let's put it into our calculator to see what happens. Actually, let me show you how to do this. If we look at E to the X, at when X is 0, Y is 1. Does everybody understand that? Who does not understand that when X is 0, we get 1? You're all brilliant. Anything to the zero power is one, isn't it? Definitely on that four. I'm not done yet. I'm just drawing e to the x at the moment. So my asymptote is y equals zero. It increases like that. All right. So now, what is happening to the standard form? The standard form, she said, was moving up four. So really, the asymptote moves up four. And it shifts left, or excuse me, right three. So this is really going to go up four and go to the right three. So here is my new line. So without using your technology, you should be able to graph this stuff. Let's try it out. E to the x minus three. You need to make sure you have grouping symbols e to the x minus 3 in parentheses. Now it looks like it's right on the line y equals 4, but it's not. It's just, it's that close to it that your graphing calculator can't show the difference. Okay? So my domain is all the real values, negative infinity to positive infinity. My range is what? What are the y values? 4 to positive infinity, not including 4. Right? This is a review, you guys gotta be able to do this. Okay, what's my asymptote? Four. Y equals four. Y equals four. Y equals four, thank you. Alright, let's do another one. Let's try to graph it without our calculators this time. Example 14. Y equals negative e to the x minus one minus two. So what you should think of is what the standard form looks like, e to the x, okay, and what it's doing. And you describe to me what's happening. Yeah, all three of you. Can you describe for me what's happening? It's going to go up two and go down two and I thought it goes down two, down two, right one. Wait, so the negative two does the opposite. No, the opposite is in the oh, grouping area. Okay. okay. Anytime it's in the grouping area, it's the opposite. So to the right one and down two. Anything else? 
reflected. It's reflected about the <coughs> about the x-axis. So let's just do one little thing at a time. Let's move the asymptote down to. All right. Now, what about this point? First of all, this is reflected, so it would hit here. But it's also <coughs> moved down two as well, right? And to the right one. So that point's going to be right there. Yes? No matter which way you go. No. Just trying to do it in a different way that you kind of walk your way through it. And since we know it's reflected at this point, we can now draw it with some accuracy. Let's put it in the graphic calculator and see if we're right. So first of all, I'll just put e to the x in, and then I'll do the, the next one. So negative e, x minus one. Make sure x minus one is in the parentheses. Minus two. There's. Whoa. You had e times x. <laughs> x going through y, y equals 1, and there's the reflection moved over and down to and Okay? Nine different what you did yesterday. Any questions? Alright, so we're going to do the last half of this uh, lesson on Monday. Today, page 313, 5 to 13 odds. Uh,